That way, really sketchy. This way is only a little bit sketchy. I always take a little bit sketchy over a lot of sketchy. Well, buenos dias, amigas. We are up here on the infamous Rogers Pass in Glacier National Park, Canada. The line we are going for is the iconic Bugs to Rogers Traverse. The crux, well, it's in the name. It's a traverse, which I think is just a French word for no skiing. And if you watch the series, you know I hate traverses. But this one, it actually could be a little bit different. This is truly like an iconic wilderness traverse. This thing is over 80 plus miles, over 30,000 vertical feet, and can take anywhere from eight to 10 days. The Bugs to Rogers Traverse was pioneered in 1958 by Americans Bill Briggs, Bob French, Sterling Neal, and Barry Corbett. And this traverse is anything but mellow. It's not meadow skipping. It's not a glacier cruise. From the reports and from everything I've read about it, there's a crux a day. There's some potential for technical climbing. There's rope work involved and there's serious navigational issues. The weather can change in the blink of an eye. We're in a place that's not known for massive high pressures. You're going to encounter storms. You're going to encounter whiteouts. It's truly like an on your own, figure it out along the way adventure. So I do think, although I hate traverses, this one might be different. At least I hope it is. We'll find out in 10 days though. And on this traverse, it's not just gonna be you and I. We actually got someone else to sign up for it. All around amazing skier, great guy. He's been in an episode before. We got Tobin Siegel for this traverse. This has been on his list, uh, like it is for a lot of people. And just like me, he's also a new dad. So we're gonna be on the dad bod trip. The dad bod. Our dad bods. <laughs> it's called the Bugs to Rogers Traverse. We're doing the Rogers to Bugs Traverse. We're actually doing it in reverse. And that is specifically because of the weather that is happening. Temperatures are going to be spiking. By going north to south, it means we're going to be climbing up north cooler slopes, less exposed to rapidly warming south faces. So our exposure time is minimized. This way, north to south, is actually going to be the safer way. So yeah, we're doing the reverse traverse. Last little weather check of open snow and it's looking about as stable as we can hope for. There is a little potential for storm coming in. Freezing levels do get a little high during the late afternoon, so we might have to do some early starts, but overall, like we're in a spring melt free cycle. We're gonna have a lot of convectives in the afternoon, potential for a little bit of snow, but potential for a lot of good weather too. Avalanche truck, let's see here. So this is definitely, we're on the considerable in the tree line and alpine and moderate. Definitely the problems we're talking with are wet loose, wind slabs and cornices. All stuff that's manageable with terrain management and time, but stuff to be watching out for the whole time. Got a, making a very bold decision. New boots, new liners on a 10 day traverse. About as bold of a call as you can make. We've loaded up our beasts. We're gonna put these on our backs. And we are going for a very, very long walk. Let's do it. You ready for a traverse? How are those packs so far, boys? So far, they are just as burdensome as I would imagine. I'm like trying to come at peace with it, I'm trying to think happy thoughts about it on my back. And then I'm looking at this hill in front of us going, okay, we're gonna put you on the top of there. Like I almost feel like it's a showing my backpack this great time, but I have to get up there. So we are nearing the top of the Elisiva lot which was most likely going to be our biggest climb of a uh, traverse. Depends how many passes we link up, but about four grand of up to get to this point. We are going to leave the skin track, head off into the unknown. We are still on the top 
a bit of a silhouette. <laughs> I said that like two hours ago. <laughs> well, it turns out this glacier is very long and slightly uphill. First skiing of our adventure. No, great adventure. We're doing it. Very nice. I'm enjoying this. All right, gentlemen, let's uh, ski through the cabin. Let's go get some sleep. It's 4 30. Stay away from that cornice because it could break at any moment. Yeah, that's what I was saying. That's the cornice. Yeah, and it looks like. No, it looks very fragile. Like you can see a couple chunks that broke. That thing is not supported at all. That hanging tongue, that thing is about to go in the sun, prime time right there. Naturally flat spot in the, where the trees start to get thin again, just above that lake. I think that's it. The map definitely shows that it's south that way. This entire zone yeah. is very much alive right now. Oh yeah. Yeah. Did you hear that big, I, that scared the shit out of me. Oh yeah, me too. Took a little bit, but we found the cabin. It just happens to be a little buried. Did it. We got day one. I'm gonna huff this backpack off. Well, morning of day two. About 8.15 in the morning, we caught up on some sleep. Solid 10 hours last night, which is great. We have got a couple of kilometers skin to the DeVille Icefall. Some hazards with obviously Serac Fall, deep climb, pretty crevassed terrain right after that. So then we'll see how far we can get before we can't see anything anymore. <laughs> go down into this valley up there and then up there while all under all this stuff so it's gonna be a quick fast punch <laughs> that is gonna be a good sign <laughs> oh my god so I'm gonna not take my skis off. So, and this is definitely what I'm worried about over there. Oh yeah. On the climb, like this would scare the shit out of me. I'm not gonna lie. I don't see anything. Nice and flat light, but there we go. Here it is, the DeVille head wall. That was the original rappel and potentially climb. New one is right there. What is melted and receded is allowed for this ent entrance and that entrance. The biggest thing we got going on is we got a breakable crust. After we get really, really difficult getting up this. We are, love the bottom of the rappels. It's like about a hundred meters of rappelling. So I think we got about 50 meters of climbing in some very thick, deep snow. Snow in. It's coming in. Yep. <laughs> we uh, made it to the top of the DeVille headwall. Right at the toe of the DeVille glacier. First crux of the day is done with. That was still good to get through. That was not super easy. Now we've got weather coming in. We're going to be on a very wide, very flat, featureless glacier for uh, at least an 8K walk before going up to the Grand. So majority of our vert is done with. Now it's just like slightly up for a long time.
we just got a weather update and the weather update says that tomorrow looks like a significant pulse of precipitation and we're kind of guessing that's going to come with a lot of wind so we know for sure we're not going to sit where we're sitting right now on a giant flat neve at like eight or nine thousand feet because we'll just get rocked so we're trying to decide between heading towards the grand there or dropping down and getting out of the storm getting down to tree line basically definitely see some signs of recent avalanche activity not related to warming and more related to this wind slab that we saw lower and that we saw in the report before we left this amount of wind and this amount of precip that's already been happening looking at that overpass just seems a bit sketchy right now go low for hunkering down at least for the storm and then make a call from there it's all kind of like the process of this traverse is again there's not one route to do it and you got to make the route calls that fit the weather and fit the avalanche conditions i have all my layers on right now and i'm cold <laughs> so that's also a bad side that's a factor it down to the valley floor pump it down for the storm see how she goes tomorrow they're calling for heavy precipitation so we'll button batten down the hatches go to bed tonight Go, bud. It's going. My sleeping bag been touching this wall the entire night, so wet. The condition in general right now is wet. It's like kind of raining slash snowing. It's just in general wet, and it's gray out there, and sleeting and wet. I don't know what we're going to do today. I don't think it's going to get any drier anytime soon. No dryness on the horizon. Sounds like the boys got a bit wet last night. What's that? So there's, uh, there's a little bit of activity happening here. What's, uh... Whoa, buddy. Yeah. We're just continually improving on camp because it's really wet in here. So we're trying to do everything in our power to be less wet, which there's not many options to get dry right now. Look at that. Yeah, we got wetness above us, wetness below us, and wetness on us. C'est la vie. See you guys in the morning. Check out all the snow. I just gotta work hard to keep all the snow off the, off the tents, man. It is nuking. Yo, boys, you awake? Oh, yeah. You didn't sleep well last night? Yeah. Yeah. So great. How much did it snow out there? Like, I'm accumulating the snow walking from my tent yeah. to here. Yeah. No, 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 hold it. There you go. Literally just left this tent like 15, 20 minutes ago to go have breakfast. And it's already. Absolutely. Throw it again. We're gonna dig this thing out. I'm not sure we chose the best day to get moving again here, but storm was supposed to be way worse yesterday, and so far we've got eight inches in the past couple hours. Barely out here, man. Quite a day to pack up camp. It's 4:45 in the morning. Been up for an hour and a half. I think we're all moving pretty slow, just because it's uh, well, really snowing outside. Hopefully, we're out of here in the next half an hour. Well, we've broken down camp. Um, luckily it's eased up on the snow. It's not full dumpage, but you gotta make quick haste and get out of this valley before it warms up and stuff starts coming down on top of us. So we are going that way because that way really sketchy. This way is only 
a little bit sketchy. I always take a little bit sketchy over a lot of sketchy. Just saw a big avalanche come down this chute right across oh, the canyon. Really? Good thing was, it felt more powder than power, but it's nonetheless terrifying. We're gonna keep on our toes today. As we say on the bugs to Rogers, there's a lot of different options, and the original route goes up and around there. But, uh, you know, the goal is to traverse from point A to point B and do it in any which way you can. We're getting forced off because avalanche danger, wind slabs, white out, bunch of fresh snow and warming. Our goal is to get to our cache, which is at the bottom of the valley first, and then try and get it in the first cells, but we'll see where the day takes us. So in the meantime, we do need to get out of this valley. I have a feeling we're gonna start seeing a lot of avalanches rain real quickly. See club coming off uh, that upper cliff. It's a good high drama day so far. Well, so far so good as far as the valley bottom travel. I think this is the reason why we woke up at three in the morning. It's actually sort of frozen-ish, which is a surprise. We're moving through the woods and find our cache. A couple more hours of this and a big up after that. The unfortunate thing for me right now is I've got real bad explosions out the back end. Like, full, not good, really sick feeling. Just gotta warm it up, toughen up, and go. Very near a cache. I think it's somewhere around here. It's hard to find it. In the forest. Would it be a safety project without a little bushwhacking? Keep heading straight. Hey, I think we're in the clearing where it's at, but it's somewhere in here. I see the cash! I see the cash! Now let's see if it's not made it. It's been nicking there, so I've seen bear tracks, critter tracks, all heading in the general direction of our cash. That would be a massive bummer. Like, game over. It's definitely a little critter tracks at the point. It's just like. Bear prints, but it's a little critter. Oh no. Oh no. Uh oh. So that's not good. Oh, I'm so nervous right now. Trip ender. That was ridiculous. That looks pretty interesting. Going for it. Whoa! First, we get to go ski down. Ski? Hey, Tobin. Hey. Cody said we're gonna go skiing. <laughs> no, no, we're on a traverse. 